Now I'm eating my lunch right now. Even though it's late in the afternoon. I haven't eaten all day. I'm a little hungry. Anyway, um, it's a brat with uh, sauerkraut and mustard. Oh, so good. <laughs> all right, I'm going to just found this little scrap of wire. I never throw anything away when it comes to wire. I always store it in a box so that I can go through the box and try to find something that I can use. And this is what I'm going to use for the uh, tail. Take out the, the old tail, put in the new one. This is just a bunch of twisted wire that I put together that, uh, well, this thing needs greasing. Uh, I took baling wire and uh, attached one end to a nail on a board, put the other end uh, bent over twice, the wire up into the mouth of the uh, uh, drill bit and where it comes down and clamps on the uh, the uh, drill bit uh, I tightened that around the wire and then just started slowly spinning the uh, wire until it finally developed into a rope which uh, makes good good uh, armature so I wasn't intending to come in today because I've got to get a bunch of stuff put together for the trip that I'm going to take. And, uh, but I had several friends, including a, a friend of mine in Australia who lived in the outback for the first years of her life. And she was telling me how they choose a dog that won't back out of a fight or you know, won't get uh, limp-wristed when danger approaches. They don't tuck their tail in a, in, a, in a form like that. They actually put it up. And they don't put it up too high because the higher it goes, the, uh, the more dominant they're showing themselves. And they don't want to be over-dominant. Just they want to be there for their master. And so that's what I'm doing. Well, I got one more bratwurst to finish off, so I'm going to eat that and I'll Somebody, be Somebody right uh, in a comment uh, below the video that I posted yesterday uh, asked me to uh, do the dog's head in the position. It was in before when I first did the research, and there you go, the photograph of uh, the dog that uh, I was taking the, the pose. And as you see, the dog's uh, head is not down like... I had it uh, in the photograph, in the original one. And so I'm going to attempt to put that down. I also pushed down on his shoulders to bring down the front end just a little bit closer to the ground. And i got to figure out how am I going to do this. Now, knowing that I've got one wire inside his neck, I can pretty well cut this I, I'm sorry if this is painful to watch but it's for science <laughs> and I'm going to attempt to take down the head just a little bit lower raise his head and bring his head around like that And that means I'm going to move the dog back to this position. So he's looking around his master at something. And uh, I think that's going to be a good position for the dog's head. Down just a little bit and up. Of course, that's going to take some re-sculpting in that area, but... I think that looks better, and then I'm going to 
fill in that. I, my, I turned off all the electricity in my studio because I was going to be gone for two weeks, and I figured, why waste electricity when I'm not here? So lights and everything were off, and clay was not softened, so I've had to wait for it to soften up. And his one ear would not be twisted around. It would be forward. From what Tanya told me. Because all his attention is going to be right at the danger. Ears up and forward. And ready to go on the attack. And, uh. work on his eyes when I get back. Not happy with the uh, dog's eyes yet. Let's turn this straighter. He's not curious. He knows there's some danger coming. And so he wouldn't have that curious look on his face. And the type of dog that would have been chosen respected would have been a, a dog that uh, was a little braver than the one I created. All right, there we go. Now, in the photograph it shows a tail down and curled up in the back, and I'm not certain that's what I would do, but uh, on this one, but I'm just, I don't know. See, I'm, I've never really owned a dog. The last time I owned a dog was, gosh, over 40 years ago. It was a beagle. I've got some little anatomy things I need to put on the dog, too, like the uh, inner toe and the knobs in the back of their uh, foreleg. And uh, if there's any on the back leg, I'll do that, too. But right now, I'm just trying to get this going here. Now I'm going to take this away from there. And I think I'm going to just go ahead and try to build up the clay around the base. Well, as you can see, the dog is closer to what that original picture was. And I want to show you something else. I made a good decision to uh, redo the dog because you can see how small this dog is compared to him. It would have been really like a weenie dog instead of a, a good camp dog, so I'm glad I didn't stick with that one. clay up to the base of the feet. All right, I tried something that somebody suggested I do a long time ago, and I just never got around to trying it, and that's putting the clay on a plate and putting it in a microwave 
and it really works well. Just soften up the clay to where you can work with it. I put it in for about a minute 40, or no, a minute 10 seconds, and uh, total time, and it's now soft enough for me to work, which makes it really nice. Okay. Well, I love you guys out there because you give me suggestions that uh, some of you are not too bad. Like I said, I'll finish this off more when I get back, but uh, it should be fine for now. gives you a better feel of what it's going to look like when it's all finished and the base is uh, joined up with the other base. I like it. So I get back in uh, February, I'll uh, say adieu, which I think means goodbye.